Hi guys, welcome to the Savvy Money Show with me, your host Sean. If you enjoy any of today's entertainment, don't forget to smash that lovely like button. Helps with the YouTube algorithm and getting the video out to more people. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell notification. If you're looking for a free trading platform on which to trade your shares, look at the description. Links in the description below. You'll get a free share for signing up and depositing a small amount. Free trade only requires uh, one pound to deposit and you'll get a free share worth up to £100. Stake, you'll get a free share up to £200. Uh, sorry, $200, but it will require a $100 deposit. On with the show. Now, I recently did a video showing why a crash will not happen. And this one is for showing why a crash will happen. And that way, based on data alone, you can make your own opinion without any of my bias getting involved. Now, I think too many people are putting their own bias in these videos. I'm just putting the data. Now, why I think there will be a crash. Firstly, we start with some of the valuations. This is one Texas Roadhouse. Restaurants are closed. They've only opened a few of them and they're at 50% capacity. The entertainment they used to provide isn't there. They, If you've been to one of them, they would have line dancers, like 10 of them. Now they only have two, the waitresses, uh, two of them line dancing every 30 minutes because they don't have the staff because they don't have the capacity. And it's you see, it's trading above what it was for most of last year, which is crazy. Last year, it was bringing in profits. It was growing as a company, and uh, the future looked great for it. As you can see, it, it's going up there and up and up and up and growing until COVID-19 or the Rona owner for our friends across the pond. <coughs> Sorry. Now, you have Uber. And you see how it's above again a lot of what it was trained for last year. Now, another thing with Uber, they are saying that for the current quarter, 30% loss, uh, it will lose 30% of its growth. For the year, it'll be 6.7%. I think it's way, going to be way above 10%. Ride sharing is a majority of its business. They've had to give away free rides to key workers. They've had, they haven't had the income they expected from the delivery, but that's been the only thing sustaining them. They've had to let go a lot of their staff. And I'm not talking about their drivers because their drivers are contractors but their uh, their main staff who help with the growth of the company now also we've heard about the takeover with Grubhub and they should have snapped it up when they could because now uh, I mentioned before how two other companies were coming in for it now it seems a company that has a bigger market share than Uber when it comes to the delivery, food delivery sector is considering coming in and taking over Grubhub, but I'll do another video on that later. Because that's not what this is about. And the next one is going to be Facebook. Sorry about this. And you see there, they're saying it's going to be a 9% growth. Before this started, it was going to be 20 or 30% growth. And I think 9% is actually uh, hopeful. When you think 80 to 90% of its revenue comes from ads, and the ad revenue has been almost non existent, they've had to slash their prices to get any ads in and give them 
uh, more ads for the price, these companies. And what's going to happen when they go back to the old pricing? These companies are going to be well miffed and they're going to use it as a negotiating tool. Now, they people are factoring in that, and I'm a fan of Facebook. I own some Facebook, but people are going to be factoring in the fact that they've come out with the shops and the web chat, and trust me, the web chat is not as good as Zoom. And the fact they were doing well, but they're not factoring in any of the bad stuff. No. Here's one more slide before we go. No one ever went broke taking a profit. And that's true. So if you can get a profit, then take it. But we'll look at how Facebook have gone up. Now remember, when everyone was telling me to steer clear of Facebook, I went into them. I valued them as a company, and I saw value in them. Now... They're slightly overvalued. They have to be under 230. 230 is their price point. So they're overvalued at the moment. Now, you see here, they're higher than they was any time last year. And that's crazy when a situation has affected 80 to 90% of their revenue. I know they're adapting, they're bringing in new ways, but... And the Facebook shops should be great for them, but it hasn't brought in anything for them yet. They haven't done anything with it yet. It could fail. I don't think it will, but you never know. We now go to... Sorry about this. Right, this is... These are some graphs, which kind of prove my point forward PE All right and this is taken from 28th of May and uh, was posted look how high these companies are valued you can just pause it and take a screenshot if you and this is a worrying one forward PE I show us you have to go back to the tech bubble of 2020 to get the same P forward PE ratios for the S&P 500, 400 or 600. Now, and with the Russell, small cap stocks, you know, it's never been like this. Yeah, and the peg as well. Now, the peg is supposed to be per annum's growth. There hasn't been growth. I mentioned before how with uh, the main analyst valuing Boeing, he's valuing it on them coming back to profitability by 2023. Why? Many factors could prevent that. Second point is, even if they do, we shouldn't value it now on 2023 earnings. I pulled up Nikola Motors for their earnings being a multiple of 2024 earnings. Firstly, they, there was so many things wrong with it, but the fact that going by their own figures, their original valuation of 10 bucks a share was on one times 2024 earnings when share price went up it was three times 2024 earnings that's if everyone uh, who uh, pre-booked vehicle actually took them up and we know that won't happen now this per earnings growth is worrying we can look at some other charts. Um, let me see. 
we can have a look at the S and P. Sorry, sorry about this. Right, we ha can have a look at the ninety-year chart, and this here, this bit, sorry, this bit here, where we where the COVID nineteen or the rolling run of our friends across the pond hit and come and we had the dip and we've recovered looks just like pre-depression errors now we have a thing with employment and I'm not talking about the 3% disparity in the numbers I'm talking about where they didn't report the amount of Americans that were receiving unemployment insurance benefits, which is almost 9 million, which would raise the made jobless rate to 5.7%. It kind of and you get. People that are saying, oh, but the NASDAQ is 10,000, it's made a V recovery. And the S&P 500 has made a V recovery. Look at it, we're already there. To those sort of people, it reminds me of seeing an airplane where it's got nothing. And I saw this online and I just had to laugh. But it's got nothing to see here move along and with Leslie Nielsen as a stock market <laughs> someone's put that on it and I thought it was brilliant but if you add a few more things to it you've got unemployment you've got GDP which is decreasing all the time massive recession profits we're told we shouldn't expect profits in 2020 now you look at Japan and their debt level, their GDP, their debt level, and you think about it, and you get told with their GDP and their debt level that it's two and a half times, their debt level is two and a half times their GDP. So basically, if the country is making a hundred bucks, the country has to pay 250 bucks in to whoever owns its debt now america had the level of 50 percent for all this it rose to 75 percent and now it's one on one which is dangerous because if gdp falls anymore or the debt level rises anymore then that means they will be going into debt very fast. That's how Japan went from once it hit one, that's how it went to two and a half because you will be uh, owing more than you bringing in. The other thing is you have the fact that the money printer People are writing on the streets, which everyone knows, not just in America, but around the world. Because they're fed up. Look, these corporations getting most of the money and the people on the streets losing their jobs and they have to pay for it in their taxes. Now, at the same time, Jerome Powell and his friends at the top no, if they turn off the money printer, there'll be a crash because there'll be panic in the markets thinking, oh, he's turned off the money printer. There's no insurance for me. I'm getting out. I'm not saying you should get out. I'm just saying if you see any profits in your shares, it's a seller's market. People are buying up. They're buying up bankrupt stocks like hurts so 
you have control. If you make enough of a profit, make you happy rather than staying in and staying greedy, then I would, I would, uh, cash. Okay. because if a crash comes and you, you don't have the cash to capitalize on it, I would at least have 20% cash in my account anyway. Anyway, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.